news and notes. Like Skeeter from... <laughs> Skeeter. <laughs> Skeeter. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, our news and notes this week is sponsored hey, by Shirtbox. <laughs> the easiest and our safest way notes. to sell, um, to buy and sell graded comics. You can download the Shirtbox app over on iOS or Android. Uh, on those devices, you can use our code OBP15 at checkout for fifteen dollars off your first order. That is OBP15 at checkout. Thank you so much to Shortbox for sponsoring the show and our news and notes. I, I just want to quickly point out, Shortbox always has an incredible like display at these conventions they are all out they kind of they very much stand out compared to the others uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna is like gonna keep... be the whole episode <laughs> it's gonna be is this gonna be just the... ever so slightly like poking the bear uh, that aaron couldn't go last weekend <laughs> if you hear so... me go silent for the rest of the episode it's because i've literally just shut left. my mic off and i've <laughs> gone to go run errands because i would have more fun doing that i'll go clean my cat's litter boxes because i'd rather not hear anyways moving on <laughs> aaron running errands <laughs> 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 the boys season four photos offer a first look at sister sage and firecracker so these two new characters have been revealed for the boys season four amazon shared a first look at firecracker and sister sage orange is the new black star susan hayward is playing sister sage and the ticks valerie curry is set to play firecracker amazon oh. isn't sh isn't sharing much information on these characters as they say the details on firecracker and sister sage are kept under wraps until the season airs. These are two brand new characters created for the series. All that is known is, is that these characters come from writer Eric Kripke, who said they will be some of the craziest character additions that the series has created. So we have a photo here, Aaron, of these two new gals and they're all of their attire. What are your thoughts? I mean, I don't know if there's really much to divulge here. It's more of just like a point of seeing these two new characters here on the show. But uh, I think... Uh, I could probably speak for both of us in saying that whatever Eric Kripke and crew do with the boys, probably going to be on board, right? Yeah, they've. Uh, I, I remember, you know, when we were talking about the boys when it first came on, you weren't like super excited about the whole idea of it because, again, mm -hmm. as we've said before, you're not really like the comic is 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 filled with a lot of just <laughs> terribleness, just <laughs> <laughs> terribleness. <laughs> and so I remember that was kind of like a big thing for you. And so yeah. going into the show, it's kind of interesting to hear your your different approach to how to how you've accepted the show because the show is good the oh, show yeah. is exciting so there's good. some there's some there, there's a lot of like again as somebody who i don't like media that i can kind of see what's going to happen predict mm -hmm. a lot of the story but this one is constantly throwing me for a loop and i love it i think that's probably why i'm loving the show so much compared to the comic because the comic is much more grotesque and kind of angry it's very like you could tell that writer Garth Ennis hates superheroes or at least resents them <laughs> in some way. And he very much makes that a forefront to the, you know, the ultimate theme of the boys, the comic. I think the show is more so poking fun or holding a mirror up to comics and to superheroes rather than like outwardly hating them. So I think that's the difference. I'm a, I'm a big fan of like a, like a deconstruction. Okay. We're in the age of deconstructing these heroes and this genre. I'm fine with that. If it's done well, like the boys I'm down, but when it's outright like anger towards superheroes or someone who just like outright doesn't like them, I think that's where I start to lose a little bit of interest. Cause I'm not there. I don't, I, I don't have any resentment towards superheroes whatsoever. I feel like they're, I mean, the, the boys is doing exactly what it's kind of set up to do. It's mm -hmm. airing a lot of the grievances and a lot of the misconceptions and ideas that we think about when it comes to what's really happening between the lines and between the panels or behind right. the panels of comics. You know, for instance, the whole thing with, you know, Soldier Boy and his sidekick and everybody was talking about how, you know, he used to like sexually assault him and beat him and you know that people have been saying for years like you know the whole batman and robin thing that they're they're you know lovers and and it's like and then you have like the, the dynamic one, is the, weird the, <laughs> yeah there's like weird dynamics in all of it and people question it and that's what humanity does that's what society does same thing with like the wonder twins we had the uh that one those two, the sister and brother in the last season when they were hosting hero gasm like yeah. that was absolutely a pastiche of the wonder twins and it's uh -huh. like of course they would be still hanging out and they're probably super weird and gross together. You yeah, know? codependent so it's like, and just like codependent. Just like yeah. Truly toxic to each other. <laughs> so yeah, no, Why do you I'm take the fucking for... form of steam, you dumbass? 
<laughs> season four of the boys, we're excited. We've reviewed uh, season two and three here on the show. And I think we've both given it, I, I want to say, and, and someone please go back and vet us on this if it's not true, but I think we've given it both, both season three, or excuse me, season two and three above a four out of five David A. Winers because they've both been really great. This last season especially just was super awesome. So yeah. uh, Aaron, let's go ahead and get a little uh, bit lighter super. here. Oh, speaking on super, yes. Why don't you take us into our next bit of news? Da 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 news. Oop. We got our first teaser for Universal Pictures Illuminations, the Super Mario Brothers movie. Did you like that? Yeah, I love that was a great transition. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. I <laughs> I, I practiced that. I don't bring much to this show, but I can do a transition, or as I like to call it, a segue. <laughs> That's right. It's funny because it's not true. Uh, the film also stars Anya Taylor-Joy as Princess Peach, Charlie Day, which I love. Charlie Day is Luigi. We only get a little bit of him in this. Yeah. Jack Black is Bowser. Keegan-Michael Key is Toad. Seth Rogen is Donkey Kong, of course. Fred Armisen as Cranky Kong. <laughs> Kong. Kevin Michael Richardson as Comic. And Sebastian Maniscalco is Spike. So uh, I don't know if you know who Sebastian Maniscalco is, but my wife and I, we we love his comedy, his stand-up. He is so funny funny i'm gonna look him up while you're talking about this oh my god he's so funny for voices anyway i'm gonna okay i'm gonna do the do the 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 news and then i'm gonna say my piece okay so the movie's directed by aaron horvath and michael jelinek from teen titans go teen titans go to the movies and a screenplay by matthew fogel the lego movie 2 the second part minions the rise of Gru. super mario brothers movie will be released april 7th of 2023 so let me go through this real quick so we can move on because all you're gonna, you're not going to hear a whole lot of gripes from me, but you're going to hear some gripes. I am excited for this movie. I am excited because obviously I'm a huge Super Mario Brothers fan. I've been a fan of the the of Nintendo this this specific franchise my entire life. He has the Nintendo tattoo. Everyone, yes. Saying that, I do not agree with the studio not taking the Mario Mario's voice actor. To, to do this voice acting. I don't agree with it. I understand that they want big names and there's a huge star studded cast and it wouldn't make sense to have an unknown guy who voices a character come out of nowhere and stand you know shoulder to shoulder with some of these celebrities. And also they want to make money off of it, obviously. Can I ask you a quick question? So Charles Mar- Marnett is the obviously the voice actor that plays Mario and most of... He's been playing the character since 1992. Yes. Would you have liked to have seen Charles take on the role of Mario and then just have everyone else as actors? Or would you just have the voice acting crew from the games, all of them just come over to this Illumination movie? I don't see. And I don't know, because that's not I mean, this it's not my choice. But if I had a if I had a choice to do it. I, OK, I guess the real question is, do you, is the is the problem Chris Pratt? Is that where your your disconnect is with this trailer and with this film? Mushroom Kingdom, here we come. It's not Chris Pratt in general. I mean, it's just the fact that again, it, I, maybe my my maybe my gripe is not necessarily with the studio in general. It's just the fact that we as a society will probably not go see a movie unless we have big names attached to it. Okay, sure. Yeah. You know, I I and I feel like, you know, again, Mario is a international phenomena he's a world like icon. universally known icon i don't necessarily think that the voice actor for him could have would it would have differentiated what people would have done maybe they would take it less serious but i i mean i don't know again there's just a lot to it i don't think necessarily that chris pratt was a bad choice do i think that they should have done a little bit more i hope at least in some way they do something to honor the original voice actors of of the entire team you right. know i don't know there's just it, it's very it's very t- two different very different sides of the argument because if you want to make money like i said you're going to need a star study cast like they've brought this is this is a great cast yeah it is an amazing cast and i'm excited and, for it. even huh we'll just remember when this voice cast was announced okay this oh my god the, they, they were so much hate oh my gosh yes and also this is also in the like the peak of Chris Pratt's popularity, right? I mean, was, I think it was announced and back infamy. in 2000. Yeah, I think it was announced in 2020 is when they announced all this. So Chris mm-hmm. Pratt was still very much the darling of Hollywood. You know, I don't, I don't think it's like only been the last couple of years that Chris Pratt's popularity amongst like I don't know nerd culture has kind of started to wane a little bit. I mean, he's secretly probably a 
Republican and he's like, he, no one trusts an a Scientologist and like people don't <laughs> trust him because uh, there, I've just recently watched this video that we're going down, we're going down a real crazy rabbit hole or maybe like a tube, like a, what, what is that? What yeah. it's called? In the, in the a we're, going down a, we're going down a pipe <laughs> hole right now. <laughs> All right. So uh, it's like people, you go back to Chris Pratt at the beginning of his career and he started off. <laughs> you, start, you go to Chris Pratt at the beginning of his career and he is like, starts off as trying to be the lead man. And is, he's always getting cast as these dickhead jerks. Right. And then he starts to gain weight, which is obviously that's fine. That's what happens to people. And he gets cast in Parks and Rec. It becomes the fun doofy guy on that show. And then he becomes the star that he wants to be. And then he gets cast in Guardians of the Galaxy. And he becomes he, he becomes that leading man that he's always wanted to be. The star, like kind of the hunk, just leading man. And now no one trusts him because they don't know how to like, they can't read him anymore. He's he's like, he's too lateral. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't know. It's hard, it's hard to get a get a grasp on him. And I can he's see. He's a goofy guy who looks like who looks like a superhero. That's what it is. And it feels manufactured. Yes. Yeah, it feels like he went to a factory and somebody was like, "Yeah, he had a press team put his personality and look together." Is what it feels like, yeah. and I don't know if that's true. I like Chris Pratt honestly, and I'm not. And to kind of go on my thoughts on this trailer, I didn't mind it. I actually thought a lot of it. Up, I won't even say I didn't mind it. I actually quite enjoyed it. I think it looks really good. I'm really excited to see where this goes. I know some people are angry, like you said, about kind of like the voice acting and. I actually even watched a, a live reaction to the New York Comic Con drop when they announced this at New York Comic Con. There's another little dig at your and I didn't get to go to that, but it was at New York Comic Con. People were like not really hooping and hollering like they generally do for these trailers. So I was like, hmm, maybe the public are not on board. I don't know. I like I said, I'm excited. I, Cause Illumination, they yeah. do a great job. This is obviously the the studio that Illumination. put together the, the group is it like uh the What's the group? The minions grew the despicable yep. me universe. So then that's what I was gonna say is like Aaron Horvath and Michael Jelinek from they did Teen Titans Go and Teen Titans Go to the movie. Teen Titans Go, if you've never watched it, is hilarious. It is so <laughs> it funny. Is. And it like is. some of the stuff that they put in the background and like, like little digs they make, the humor is hilarious. So I think that this is going to be very much. Uh, and again, screenplay by Matthew Fogel. If you've watched either of the Lego movies or Minions Rise of Gru, this is a fan fantastic team that is going to put a, put together a movie that is not only good for kids. But it's going to be amazing for like adults as well. Us. Like I'm talking, <laughs> I'm talking super pets funny. Yes, absolutely. I totally agree. And and that's a good, that's a good, you know, children's film nowadays because people our age, adults our age, are so so baked in nostalgia. I mean, Exhibit A, the Oblivion Bar podcast. All we do is talk about shit that we loved as kids and love <laughs> now. So if you want to make a successful kids movie, you make a movie that not only the kids can enjoy, but that adults can go and go, oh my gosh, I remember that from my childhood. That's funny. All that stuff. And Super Pets is a good example of that as well. So I sit here with my desk that has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine stacks of Pokemon just surrounding <laughs> me amongst other nerdy things. So moving I on. literally have a giant Silver Surfer stand up right behind me over my left <laughs> shoulder. So we can see said. his nuts. <laughs> That's right. His silver chrome nuts. Uh, last bit of news here, Boom. Aaron. Marvel changes up their release schedule for Deadpool 3, Fantastic Four, Secret Wars, and more. So this came out last week, I think, uh, or, or excuse me, later, earlier this week, I think it was like on Tuesday, uh, that Disney has announced a major overhaul in its release schedule for several of its upcoming films, and these changes push the launch of the MCU's Phase 6 all the way to 2025. These release date pushbacks come after Marvel Studios decided to put its upcoming Blade movie on hold after director Basim Tariq exited the project after a couple weeks or a couple weeks ago. Not long after that happened, it was reported that the script would be completely rewritten uh, by Moon by Moon Knight's writer Bo DeMeo, which is kind of cool. We kind of been wanting Moon Knight to show up in that film, or at least those two characters kind of get together at some point in some way. So maybe there's gonna be a connection there somehow. Midnight Suns. That's right, baby. So here's the breakdown of the new release date. So Blade, that movie is being uh pushed back to uh, September 6, 2024. We have Deadpool 3 is being moved to November 8th, 2024. Fantastic Four, I'm kind of bummed about this. Keeps getting pushed back. No one's talking about the casting. We just got a director. Come on, people. This is easy. Just hire me. I'll do it. Fantastic Four is pushed back to February 14th. Hey, Valentine's Day. Aaron, you want to go together? Have a sweet little date to go see Fantastic Four? Yeah. We got to wait three years, though. 
How's that? Can I get you? Are you available three years from now? For you? For you, for you baby? Anytime. <laughs> That's right. Uh, untitled Marvel movie moved to November 7th, 2025. A lot of people are thinking this is probably Spider-Man 4. Uh, it has not been announced yet, but some people are speculating that's probably going to be uh, Spider-Man 4 or possibly, I think the other one was Young Avengers so or Champions, whichever way they want to go with that. And then the last one was Avengers Secret Wars was moved to March 1st, 2026. So boy, oh boy, do we have a long time to wait for Secret Wars, which I'm fine with. My overarching theme or overarching thought on this is I'm fine with this. I'm actually quite happy with this. Let's slow down a little bit here, MCU. We're going to talk about this a little bit here during the She-Hulk review, but it's a lot, guys. We're, we're getting I think we'll talk content. about it shortly. I think that the untitled Marvel movie is going to be something along the lines of Planet Hulk. Oh, could be. Could be. Yeah, because, again, we'll talk about it here in just a moment during our She-Hulk review, but the Hulk character has not been able to be used in terms of a solo film because Universal has owned the rights, and those end in 2024. So if we're going to get, a, if we're going to get like a giant Planet Hulk movie, where we'll meet a character who was we were introduced to in the finale of She-Hulk, that would be the time to do it. So, yeah. Uh, Aaron, overall thoughts on this. Are you okay with them pushing all this stuff back? Or are you, yes. are you you're okay with it? I know you're really looking forward to Blade. I'm assuming we're all looking forward to Deadpool 3. I'm very excited about Fantastic Four, and I think the entire world and their mother is excited for Secret Wars when that eventually comes out. So I'm excited for it all. I think that they're reevaluating some of these things and they're they're trying to figure out how they can tie more stuff into it and i think as we move closer to 2024 2025 time time frame i think that we're going to see even more delays simply because they're going to want to they're going to bring in we're going to see more x-men i mean again we're going to talk about it we're going to see <laughs> x-men soon thank you jennifer saying what we all wanted yes. to say <laughs> All right, well, that'll do it for our news and notes this week. Thank you again to Shortbox for sponsoring our news and notes. We appreciate them. OBP15 at checkout for $15 off your first order. Uh, let's go ahead and get into our review of She-Hulk. Before we go there, though, let's go ahead and take mm -hmm. a quick break, and we will be right back. 